The Allegory of Beth by One Gamer's Opinion I don't believe there's enough solid evidence in the show to prove one way or the other on if Beth left, and I'm sure it is written that way. The only concrete thing to look at is its final scene. After, I will go into more abstract reasons about the episode and what it could represent. Let me quickly break down the episode sequence by sequence as they appear. Rick sends kids to Jerry's. Beth and Rick explore Fruppy Land on Saturday. Morty and Summer arrive at Dad's and meet new girlfriend also on Saturday. Rick and Beth get arrested in Fruppy Land. Dinner with new girlfriend Saturday night. Rick and Beth meet Tommy and see his play. They escape only for Beth to go back to save Tommy. Morty and Summer hunt with Jerry. They convince him to break it off and he drops them off at the house Sunday evening. Beth attacks Tommy Land. Jerry pulls kids out of school and runs from Angry X Monday. Beth comes back with Tommy's finger, clone montage, stop execution, Rick's offer Sunday afternoon. Jerry breaks it off Monday. Kids come home and ambiguous ending with pizza Monday evening. The reason I plan this out is because the events of the episode are not shown in chronological order, despite Rick's joke about time travel at the end. The first sequence establishes the execution happening tomorrow, and the kids are late for custody weekend. Then, B-plot has pretty clear points of time. Alien Girlfriend states dinner is at 7 that night. During dinner, they talk about their plans for tomorrow. Surprise, it's a hunt. The next scene, they are doing said hunt, implying a day has passed and it ends with them being dropped off from said weekend with Jerry. Then they are at school, and finally they show up at the end. This is important because the Beth scenes are mixed in, not in the order of time for dramatic effect. My point? Well, there is a lot to be said about that weird ending with how Rick acts, but I thought something else was really strange. The first thing Beth asked the kids was, How was Jerry's? The usual. This is strange because the kids were dropped off at the house the night before, woke up, then went to school to have the eighth sequence happen. We know the execution took place Sunday afternoon from the clock on the wall, so Beth was home Sunday evening. Now it is possible that Beth was tired, she said she was before Rick's pitch, and the kids were tired. They said they were during Sunday's hunt, and they all went to bed. But I think it's very strange that Beth did not interact with either of her children Sunday evening or Monday morning. So what is a possible reason for this? One idea is that she did interact with them, only she left on her adventure after that, and then Clone Beth took over. Rick clearly states that Clone Beth would only have the memory that Beth had up until the clone process started. Meaning, any interactions after that, only real Beth would have. Also, it's important to note that it didn't appear Rick interacted with Morty before this, as Morty bragged about something he knew that Rick didn't, the alien girlfriend. So Rick must have been busy Sunday evening and Monday morning too. I wonder what that could have been. Next is Rick's demeanor during this scene. Moving past the L-bombs and affection, let's focus on his attitude prior to getting pizza and post. Prior, he seems angry and annoyed, and after is the weirdness. The affection is clearly out of character, as earlier in the episode, Rick couldn't even admit to liking his own daughter to any degree. So what gives? Well, I think that one possible answer is episode Rick Mansing the Stone, that Rick has robot versions of himself that are capable of tricking real Beth, not to mention clone Beth. Okay, now that that is out of the way, let's talk themes and abstract points that hint to Beth leaving. The first thing I want to start with is kind of strange, but stay with me. The episode read to me like Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Cliff notes on that story is this. Prisoners are chained up in a cave and can only see shadows dancing on the wall from a fire behind them. The shadows are their entire reality as they know nothing else. One prisoner frees themselves discovers the truth, and leaves the cave to find the world in all its glory. That freed prisoner returns to the cave to convince the others, but they do not want to be convinced and would rather kill the freed prisoner if they could. This allegory of the cave idea explains two people in this episode, Tommy and Beth. Tommy is simple. He was stuck in Fruppy Land and grew up there, not knowing anything of the outside world. When Beth came to enlighten him, 
Tommy revolted and tried to kill her instead of seeing the truth that he was in an innocent world that had no consequences. Tommy is clearly a chained prisoner unwilling to leave the cave. Beth, however, is more complex. The allegory was about philosophers bringing wisdom of the world to people who did not understand, and the freed prisoner represented Socrates, Plato's mentor, who was put to death for his ideas. So in this idea, Beth is the prisoner, still chained in a world of little consequence. She enjoys ABCs, The Bachelor, has a mundane life, etc. While Rick shows her the possibility of the world that is outside her cave, his pitch for her to go on an adventure across blah blah blah. So the question then becomes, is she intelligent enough to want to leave the cave, like Rick, or scared like all the other prisoners and wants to stay, like Tommy? Luckily, the episode answers that for us, and that answer is, what would Rick do? Well, Rick's suggestion is to leave, and that's kind of what he's already doing in the series to some extent, so it's reasonable to believe that Rick would leave on the adventure. Why is that important? Because the episode flat out tells us twice that Beth is Rick. When Beth gives up her cautions and accepts who she is, she triumphantly says, Oh my god, I am my father. And later in the episode, when she is having a crisis still, Rick says, And that you are just like me. So either both characters were wrong, or Beth is just like her father and his decision would be to leave. Furthermore, Rick left his family, specifically Beth, to go on adventures, the crux of her resentment and longing. So is it hard to believe that Beth would do the same thing if given the chance, considering how hard the episode tried to show their similarities? Another thing to note is the parallel to the Lipkips family. What happens in this very episode is a family is reunited by the introduction of a clone of a member of that family. So at the beginning of the episode, the family is angry at each other, with Beth and Summer cursing and ends in the family happily eating pizza. That's kind of a direct parallel with the Lipkips if Beth was introduced as a clone at the end. Lastly, the broader question is, is Beth leaving more in line with Rick and Morty's style for storytelling? I would say yes. At the end of season 2, the cliffhanger about Rick giving himself up was immediately reversed at the start of the following season to show it was not for the family, but instead for selfish reasons. So, if we try and apply that idea to this season's cliffhanger, and the fact that it was an important plot in the season finale, I'd say it is a hard cliffhanger. Then we can guess that it will be resolved and reversed at the beginning of season 4. So just like Rick leaving the family for altruistic reasons in Season 2, only to return and reveal it was for selfish reasons, I predict that Season 4 will start with Beth returning from her trip, but not more enlightened like Rick as he implies, but more terrified at the adventure and resigned in her role with the family. You know, the opposite of what you'd expect or is presented. What do you guys think about his theory? If you liked it, click on the link in the description and tell him what you thought on Reddit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't plan on making too many more videos, but I thought it would be nice to get something out to you all. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great week. Talk to you later. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. Happily ever after gaming, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, it's 2018, man. Happily ever after theorists doing big things. <laughs> big, big things. Yeah, man.